Mark chapter 9, verse 5, you see here in the green. And Peter answered, said to Jesus, Master, Rabbi, it is good for us to be here. Let us make three tabernacles, one for thee, one for Moses, and one for Elias. Now we know this chapter here is the mountain of transfiguration. And Jesus takes Peter, James, and John up the mountain. And Peter, James, and John fall asleep, and they wake up to find Elias and Moses, and they're talking with Jesus about Jesus going to Calvary. Peter wakes up and rubbing his eyes, and he says, what we just read in verse 6 for he wist not what to say for they Peter, James and John were so afraid and Peter's always opening his mouth and I've heard I heard Peter say you know to the ill of Peter and I say no it's not to the ill Peter loved the Lord Jesus Christ and Peter may have been really quick running with the mouth but that was Peter. Peter was the first to speak up in, in Acts chapter 2. And look what happens here at Mount Transfiguration. We look at Mark 9. <clears throat> and there's Elias and Moses, and they're talking with Jesus. And Peter answered and said to Jesus. Now, he doesn't say to Elias. He doesn't speak to Moses. He walks right up to Jesus and says, Master. It is good for us to be here. Thank you for being here. This, this is something wonderful. And he speaks about this. I forget if it was first or second Peter. Let us. I don't know if that's Peter, James, and John, or that's with Jesus, but let us make three tabernacles, dwelling places. You know what a tabernacle was to Peter? It was that. That, that building, that temporary building, the tent that Moses and the children of Israel traveled to the promised land. It's the place where the Holy of Holies was, where God dwelt between the cherubims. A tabernacle is a tent dwelling. Now, Peter couldn't say temple because the temple is in Jerusalem. And we're, we're not going to counterfeit that, but let's make three tabernacles. One for thee. Now, notice one for thee. You got to give Peter credit. He thought of the Lord Jesus Christ first. With our quick thinking and our quick reaction, would we put Jesus first? Peter did. And one for Moses, and one for Elias. Well, where would be the tabernacle for Peter, James, and John? Should there not have been six? Is Peter going to bunk with Jesus, and James and John going to bunk with Moses? No. <clears throat> because the other Gospels already tell us that they were sleeping. Peter says, you know what? Jesus will build you a tabernacle. Moses will be, build you a tabernacle. Elias will build you a tabernacle. As for John and me and James, we'll sleep on the ground. Give Peter credit for being humble. Now look what else we have here. He says, let's make three tabernacles, three dwelling places. Let's camp and stay here. You, Jesus. Elias and Moses and James and John. Let's stay here. Let's the tabernacle was a place of worship. Let's stay here and worship you, G. Let's not go down. We're on a mountaintop. It's wonderful and great. And yet, God's not finished with Peter. Peter's still got to write two epistles. That we're going to have to read and study. Peter is going to miss denying the Lord Jesus Christ and weeping. You know he learned from that. Peter is going to miss Acts chapter 2. 
Peter is going, and the world will miss the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. If it was Peter's way for Jesus to remain on that mountain, Jesus Christ would have never died, he would have never been buried, he would have never risen from the dead according to the scriptures, the gospel, and man would not have been saved. Peter would not have his jail experiences in the book of Acts for the word of God. There was a man in, in the book of Acts early, he had a bad ankle bone, something with his ankle. He wouldn't, he'd be having that bad ailment for the rest of his life till he died. Had not Peter and John entered the temple that day and that man got saved through Jesus. Cornelius would have been lost and going to hell had Peter, James, and John, and Jesus, and Moses, Elijah stayed on that mountain. And so another thing is we see that, that Peter's love for Jesus, we see Peter, hey, let's stay here. Let's, but we also see a kind of selfishness. And Jesus is there, and Moses is there, and Elias is there, and there is a future that Peter is not thinking about. And sometimes Peter don't think about that, even the words of God through Jesus Christ. What, thou shalt deny me three times before the cock crow. Oh, not me, Lord. Peter's also <laughs> always denying God and his words, right, outright. I can imagine with Peter how many times Jesus walked off and shaking his head like, Ugh. I could just how many times that Jesus Christ prayed for Peter. And as we close the book of John, feed my sheep, feed my lambs, feed my sheep. It's also another remarkable thing that by the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. Look what we have here. Peter answered and said to Jesus, Master, it is good for us to be here. Let us make three tabernacles, one for thee, Jesus, one for Moses, and one for Elias. Do you see the order? Do you see Jesus Christ, the Word, and the Law, and the Prophets? Now, he didn't say one for Elias, one for thee, one for Moses. He didn't say one for thee, one for Elias, and one for Moses. He said one for thee, Jesus is first. One for Moses, the law, and one for Elias. The look at how Jesus, by the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, that God is using Peter, look how he lays out the Bible. And what Peter is saying, what he knows now, because there's no Gospels written. There's no Acts. There's no Romans. Paul is lost. Peter is laying down, if he were to have a written version of, of their Bible at that point, he is laying out what their Bible, the Bible is the word of God. Jesus Christ is the word, John chapter 1. And if Peter were to hold a Bible at that point, he would have the law, Moses, and he would have the prophets, Elias. I don't even know if that's what Peter knew what he was saying through the Holy Spirit. And there are many times, and Paul even said himself, he said, listen, I have this great desire to be absent with the body and present with the Lord, but it's needful for me to be here. And listen, I have that desire too. I mean, I want to go home. But I wake up every morning and I say, Lord, what can I do for you? I am here for you. You're not finished with me. And I've got fear and anxieties like Peter does. I, I Listen, I am not 100 completely in faith of God. There are things in my life, Lord God, yeah, I worry. If you don't, if you don't do something, Lord, something's going to be happening. But 
every day that I wake up, God's not finished with me. And there came a day for Peter that he was executed on a cross, they say, upside down. God was finished with Peter. God closed the book on Peter at that moment. And all that Peter done. But look at Mark chapter 9 and Unto Bible uh, uh, dates. It says about A.D. 32. And Hey, I don't know. But let's say A.D. 32 that this takes place. Let's say at this point, let's say for whatever. Let's say, okay, Peter, build the tabernacles. We'll stay here for 30, from A.D. 32. And they would stay there to the death of Peter, to the death of James, to the death of John. Moses and Elias, I mean, they're not going to die. They're going to die in the tribulation period. But what would not have been accomplished in A.D. 32 according to what Peter wanted? What would not be accomplished to what Stiley Hayward wants? If I had it my way right now, if Peter had it his way right now, what unaccomplishments would not have happened if Peter got it his way? If I were to get it my way? If you were to get it your way? I keep serving the Lord, keep going. Everybody knows I, I got this one prayer. I mean, I, I'm praying for the Lord to, to give me a wife and help me to go through these ministries. But I'm not ready to give up serving the Lord. My status right now is I've got health, health issues, but it doesn't look like the health issues are going to stop me, but they could in the future. But right now I am able. And yes, I want to go home. I want to be with the Lord, but God's not finished with me. And we all want that mountain top. You know, we want everything in life is great, but up on a mountain top, it's cold, it's snow, it's ice. There's no plants. It's almost like the wilderness, only it's freezing. And there's hardly any oxygen. And you realize the highest mountain in the world that, that everybody tries to conquer is Mount Everest? You know right now there are dead, frozen bodies up there right now. And they are used for direction. At this frozen dead body, you turn right or left. And at this frozen dead body, you, you went too far. You got There's actually death up on a high mountain if you stay on that high mountain too long. And yet when you go through life and you go into the valley and you are you are you are put to situations, Peter is put in jail. The first time you know he's let go, the, the second or third time he's in jail, man, he's sleeping. The Holy Spirit's gonna smack him across the face. Get up. He's resting. And we gotta go through life and we got we gotta learn and we gotta learn to trust God and, and what you know that mountaintop. Yeah, I want that mountaintop, but look at all the life trials that Peter's had after AD thirty two. And we've got two remarkable books or epistles written by Peter, and one of them is on persecution and suffering. You know how he learned that? He got off the mountain. Yes, he loved Jesus. Hey, let's stay here, Jesus. Let's live here. Let's live here, Jesus. And he and James and John got to see things that the other disciples did not get to see. And they start coming off the mountain in verse 9. Look at verse 9. 
And as they came down from the mountain, he charged them that they should tell no man the things that they had seen till the Son of Man were risen from the dead. You know what Jesus tells them as they're walking down that mountain now? Peter, if we would have stayed there, I would not have died. I would not have been buried. And there would be no resurrection. And even still, look at verse 10. And they kept the same with themselves, questioning one another, saying, what does rising from the dead mean? They had no understanding of the gospel. This is John. John would write us the gospel of, uh, the gospel of John. God, John would give us the book of Revelation about Jesus Christ. Isn't it great that Peter didn't get his way that Peter, James, and John did not stay in that mountain because <clears throat> John would not have suffered and gone to the island of Patmos. And there would be no book of Revelation. There would be no death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. We'd be all dying and going to hell if we had Peter's way. And that's, you know, Lord God, take me home, I'm finished. Well, if you're a witness, you're an evangelist, you get the gospel out, there are people dying. And if God takes you home like he wants you, people might not get saved. And look, they said, then they asked him, why did the scribes say Elias must first come? They just said, this saw Elias. And Jesus gives them the, 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 the meaning of John the Baptist. They had never learned that up on the mountain. And then they come into the big problem, the great multitudes. And there's this, there's this son. And he's got the dumb spirit. And the disciples couldn't heal. See now, all right, they're, they're, down, they're down off the mountain. Uh, your disciples couldn't help my son. And, and what's the problem here? And... and And, okay, we got a problem here. The son could not be healed by the disciples. And he's healed. <clears throat> Here's my voice. And as we go on, he's healed. I'm trying to find where. It... And right here, we want 928. And when he was coming to the house, the disciples asked him privately, why could we not cast him out? Now, let's say Jesus stayed on that mountain like Peter wanted. And he said unto him, this kind, talking to the twelve, this kind cometh forth by nothing but by prayer and fasting. And then he'd go to Galilee. And then would be on his way going to the cross. Not if Peter had his way. Now, Peter loved the Lord Jesus Christ. Peter had a great zeal for the Lord Jesus Christ. But Peter did not understand the direction in the path of God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. And Peter did not understand the direction in the path of God the Father of Peter. And I don't understand the direction and the path that God the Father has for me. <coughs> I mean, this life is miserable. When we read about the glories of heaven and, you know, no more sin, no more troubles, no more problems, amen. Who would not want to go home? I question if you don't want to go home. I want to stay here longer. But we can worship God on the mountains. We can worship God on the plains. We can worship God in the valleys. And God can use us. Peter said, let's make time. Let's camp out. Let's stay here. But what about our walk?
It's God's way. And Paul said, I have fought the good fight. And part of that fight, his Lord God, I'm tired of this. Man, the churches are against me. The Christians are against me. The Jews are against me. I've had it, Lord. I got this pain, Lord God. Lord, I got this pain. Lord, I got this pain. And my grace is sufficient for you, God, Lord. Keep going. Finish our course. And our course for Christians are we don't break out the tent and camp. We keep moving. Our mansion's not here. Our Christian walls of New Jerusalem are not here. We are in a temporary dwelling. We are sojourning. Sojourning means you don't stay, you don't build a house. This is not our dwelling place. We are pilgrims and passengers going through this life, doing what God wants us to do, being used by God. And sometimes being used by God may not always be what we want. And be better more if we do what God wants rather than what we want. Because when we come back up here, again, it says AD 32. At this point where it says where it's green. What if, what if God and Jesus Christ said, okay, Peter, let's camp out. Jesus, Moses, and Elias would bury three bodies of humans up there, and those three bodies would have died and go into hell along with everybody else. And then it would be Jesus, Moses, and Elias say, Well, now that they're dead, you think we should go on move on to what God wanted? And never mind what Peter wanted? <laughs> 